Honestly, this is a pretty gosh dang respectable breakfast. Three packs of kind of a lower carb instant oatmeal coupled with a dozen eggs. Only two of them with a the yolk. You know, there is total nutritional benefit. I'm talking omega-3s, fucking every other fatty acid under the sun in the egg yolks. Egg yolks are fucking killer. But at five grams of fat per hit, it's kind of a tough sell to slam a dozen whole eggs if you're on a bulk. A dozen whole eggs is more fat than I want to eat for the entire day today. But a few yolks, that's good for you. So this all adds up to, it's about 45 grams of fat, no, no, 45 grams of carbs here. Something, I, I forget to do, I, uh, let me just pull it up. Another benefit of tracking your macros, you can look back at what you've already eaten for the day. Because, I mean, there's no chance you're going to remember. If you say to yourself, like, oh, I'll, I'll just remember how much protein I had in my head. You know, I okay, I had 50 grams in the morning. Uh, wait, how much should I have for lunch? I, come on, and you're not going to remember that shit. You know, I've definitely had days where I was like, my protein goal was 200. This is back when I was smaller. And at the end of the day, I'm like, wait, did I have 200 or, or did I only have 150? Wait, did I eat that yesterday or... Like, you tell me, do you remember what you had for breakfast two days ago? Do you remember what snack you had at noon a week ago? You got no fucking idea, right? That's not something that's really getting ingrained in your memory. So I say track it all the way. <clears throat> but total, 52 grams of protein, 20 of fat, 10 from the two yolks, another 5 from the avocado oil I cooked the eggs in, and then 5 in the oatmeal. That is something you have got to fucking track even though it was only one and a half grams of fat per serving, you multiply that by three, that's nearly five grams. That's like 50 fucking calories. If you let 50 calories slip every time you eat, and 50 grams of calories is like 10 grams of carbs. That's not even a full handful of M&Ms, right? It's nothing, but it adds up. So you got to be real fucking careful, man. This even said it had four grams of protein per serving, which, you know, it's from oatmeal, not what I'd call a really high quality protein source. It's not a complete, you know, array of all your necessary and essential amino acids, but it still counts as calories. So I will add it, but I definitely want to make sure the majority of my protein for the day, all 250 grams, is coming more so from things like this. Eggs, fish, meats, animal products, you know, I'm talking dairy, stuff like this, you know, you get the idea. I've been a bit of a fan of kind of the low sugar condiment approach. You know, I'm talking like covering the eggs in, you know, zero calorie barbecue sauce or like hot sauce or whatever else. Kind of hard to beat salt and pepper today though. So at about 540 calories for this meal, this is a good pace. You know, I do not want to sit here and have, well, that's still too hot. I don't want to sit here and have like a thousand calorie breakfast. I definitely don't want to have a 1500 calorie breakfast because if I'm trying to stick to my calorie limit of 2,500, so that means in the entire day, I need to go to sleep at 2,500 calories to keep losing weight and keep getting leaner. If I freaking blow my load right in the morning, there's no chance that I'm going to fucking stay under my calorie limit at night because, <laughs> I mean, it would not be difficult for me to walk into the kitchen right now and slam 3,000 calories of food. So the likelihood that you're going to some, somehow toughen up at nighttime and say, oh, I had a lot of food earlier today. I'm not even hungry for it. Especially when no one's watching. You know, if it's just you in your apartment or your house or whatever, nobody's watching you. Nobody's holding you accountable. You've already eaten 3,000 calories today, which is already over your calorie limit. And you know that there's a tub of ice cream in the freezer. What are the odds that you're going to go in there, right? Pretty fucking high. Because I know that I do that. So my argument and my, um, well, my kind of defense against that, against the late night cravings, is having evenly sized, portioned out meals spread throughout the day so that my hunger bar, right? I'm talking Minecraft level. It never goes down to fucking starving. Right? Think about this. When you're fully fed, you got seven bars of hunger, you're not going to have some random urge to run into the kitchen and destroy an entire sleeve of graham crackers. 
right? You're just not really going to have so much of an urge to bust out the, um, you know, the Girl Scout cookies, right? Because you're full, right? After I eat this meal, I'm not going to somehow have crazy cravings for some kind of sweets because my body's pretty much like, all right, you've got your food in your system. You're chilling. Now, if I were to go the next six or seven hours, eat pretty much jack shit for whatever reason, which a lot of people end up doing because when they think of dieting, they think of, I mean, pretty much just fucking starving themselves, which is a stupid approach. And it, even though it kind of seems like it would work, you're just fucking playing into this awful loop of not eating anything during the daytime. You're like, oh, no, I'll, I'll save it for later. I'll, I'm going to be good today. It's somehow nighttime. You haven't eaten Jack. You maybe have had like some small, like, gr you had a granola bar and a Coke Zero. The odds are, before you go to bed, you're going to fucking pound whatever is in front of you, calorie-wise. It's pretty high. So that's kind of the, um, I wouldn't call it the theme, but sort of one of the main approaches that I try to apply when I'm dieting down. It's to, eh, I mean, 2,500 calories, 500 calories right here. That kind of adds up to about five meals per day. So 10, probably another one at like one-ish. Maybe just go work out at three and then have a post-workout meal at like five. Another one at seven, another one at nine, then go to bed. I will see how well I stick to something like that. But that's what it should really look like, you know? And... If you're not going to, you know, put in the effort of either, you have to, because if you want to diet, bulking or cutting down, you really do have to at least eat the same amount per day, whether that's a lot of food so that you gain weight and bulk up, or if it's not a lot of food, literally below the amount your body needs to stay the same weight, no matter what that is, you have to eat the same amount every day. And unless you have some kind of routine to make sure that happens, you're just fucking, you're shooting blind. You know, you don't actually know how much you're eating, where it's coming from, how many calories you're getting. What... So somehow you have to track it. In my opinion, I think you should track your macros. It's the widest approach, or it's the, um, it's the most variable approach in a way, because I can eat whatever. I don't have to meal prep five meals for the day. I can say, okay, I want to have some eggs. Uh, or, yeah, some of my buddies are going for, going to get Chipotle after the workout. Yeah, well, I'll come with them. I'll just get a bowl with salad and, you know, chickens or whatever else and like fajitas. You know, so you kind of get to play around. You're not locked into eating any specific thing at any specific time. But the chore of it is you have to track it. You know, when I made all this shit, I got to sit on my phone and plug in the details. And, you know, I am constantly kind of looking at it. But I don't consider that a fucking detriment. Because that means if I wanted to go in the kitchen later before the workout and say, all right, I just want to have a few scoops of ice cream. I can put the tub on the scale, have a few scoops, weigh the difference, see what I ate, do the calculations. Oh, I just had 40 grams of carbs. Well, well, all right. Plug it in. As long as at the end of the day, I'm still at my calorie goal. It's pretty much fucking fine, you know? Now, the argument against that sort of approach to dieting is like, you know, not f all foods are created equal, which I definitely agree with. You know, don't, uh, don't get me wrong. I do not think that... Um, you know, a bowl of chicken and rice is the exact same as like three Reese's cups and a protein shake. But they do share some basic core elements. Mainly thinking on the carb side, they both do have, I mean, let's say 400 calories, 100 grams of carbs worth of rice and like, you know, four fucking or 100 grams of carbs worth of, uh, I don't know, sorbet or sweets or whatever. When you eat both of them, you're going to get 400 calories no matter what. That doesn't change. Whether it's from a sugar or from a fucking bowl of oatmeal, the energy inside of it is the same. Now, when I eat something like this, I'm going to feel full for longer. So in a dieting context, you're probably going to want to lean towards more conventionally healthy carbs. You know, you're not going to catch me eating Krispy Kreme when I'm dieting down unless I wanted to have it as like a treat and have just one and make sure that it got counted into my macros. Because eating stuff like this will make you feel fuller for longer. You're not going to just instantly jump ship and start chowing down out of nowhere. But I'm going to sit here for a little while longer. Make all this food disappear. And then we can cut to whatever's next. One more tidbit. 
And honestly, I'm sure you either relate to this or you're going to relate to it once I say it. When I reach into the silverware drawer, I did not pick the big spoon. I did not pick the big fork because that's going to make me get smaller bites at a time. And the longer that you spend eating the food that you get to eat, I mean, just think about it. That's the longer that you're eating. You know, if I made this, I mean, it wouldn't be hard to fucking uh, competitive eat, slam this in like one minute. It wouldn't really make me feel good, though. You know, the more you can enjoy even the basic kind of foods that you end up eating, I think that's also going to help you from just uh, going off the rails calorie-wise. But yeah, let's cut to the next meal, which is definitely going to be the pre-workout meal. So it might be a little heavier on the carbs, but I guess we'll find out. All right, I can't help myself. But only two, though. And I did the math. That's seven grams of carbs. All right, some time has passed. Actually, some fucking serious time has passed. I was a little busy getting some stuff sorted. It's fucking three o'clock. So, what's in front of me? Four little, basically kind of like a thick fruit leather. I just kind of like them. But, honestly, not a bad source of fast digestive carbs. I mean, pre-workout, uh, I'm, it's kind of a hard sell when I say have a bag of skills, just because you know, you know, it is just you know the standard high fructose corn syrup based like sucralose and whatever. It's still or sucrose, as, but having some kind of fruit concentrates pre workout, I'm a fan. You know, reasonably fast digesting carb. I know it's not going to sit heavy in my stomach, and before a workout, I'm not necessarily headed towards anything very. What's the word I'm thinking of here? Anything that's going to kind of suck up my uh, fluids in a way. And by that I mean like I wouldn't want to eat five turkey sandwiches right after I go work out. Just because it's actually going to have a pump hindering effect. You know, almost like how you talk about uh, like eating a ton of breads or potatoes and anything to like sober you up in a sense. The logic there is it kind of slows down your digestion. So I don't want my stomach to have anything that's too absorbent in a way. Because when I take my pre-workout, I don't want any of that getting held up in my digestive tract. I want it going straight to my insides to be, um, well, you know, used. But half a pound of ground beef, along with two servings of fat-free cheese mixed in after I strain the fat off. So if you're cooking ground beef like 80%, you know, if you're buying like 80% lean ground beef, you're not gonna be able to pour that down the sink. When you, when you strain the fat off and you put that in a bowl, there's gonna be a serious fat layer that gets deposited. But when you get like 96% lean beef, it's the only thing really coming out of it when you strain it's water. I mean, I've poured it into bowls before. I don't really see much of a fat layer, so yeah, straight down the sink. But that's at your own risk. You know, the last thing you wanna do is pour a congealing fat and have it get sucked up and clog your drain. But that with a serving of, um, zero sugar sweet baby raised barbecue sauce that's going to put me at 110 grams of protein for the day 115 grams of carbs and 25 grams of fat and honestly this is fucking perfect this is what i want to see if this guy will oh yeah, yeah you see right in there oh there we go all those three bars measuring my protein fats and carbs they're all pretty much in balance with each other right i haven't just shot my fats all the way up to their limit, but I've had no carbs and I've had like half my protein. So that's where having evenly sized and kind of macronutriently partitioned meals is gonna help you too. You know, what are you supposed to do if you eat all your carbs in the beginning of the day? Well, you're just gonna eat all your protein right at the end? I mean, that's not the same thing, you know? And that's one thing that I'm really kind of focused on once I start bulking up in, I mean, very soon, week probably. is I want to really make sure that I have an even distribution of calories throughout the day. So for no portion, am I going to be overstressed with a massively distended stomach? And I'm not going to have to force calories before I go to bed. You know, being on track, whether you're trying to bulk up and hit a, like pretty much a fucking PR calorie-wise, like eat a lot of food by the end of the day, or manage to stay under a certain limit, consistent eating throughout the day, is pretty much going to be a solid move. But let's go to the car talk. I'm going to sit here for a little while, scroll TikTok, and we can talk about the back training.
a little on the heavier side, a little more calories in this meal than the 500 I was kind of preaching about earlier, because this is pushing more into 600, 650. But 50 grams of protein from kind of an older skirt steak that my dad made like a couple days ago. Lean cut, just a little tough, but that is kind of the nature of it. And then a pack of ramen that was sitting in the cupboard, which I do not only see as a pack of ramen that I like. It's got a lot of sodium. I'm really looking at 50 grams of carbs, 15 grams of fat, and then 9 grams of protein. But I'm not, I mean, come on. It's like I was saying before, 9 grams of protein from, you know, pretty much just processed rice. I really don't think that's hitting the complete amino acid array. But I'll just count it as 5 instead of the full 9. That puts me at 165 grams of protein total, 54 grams of fat, a little bit ahead in terms of the percentage goal of everything else, and then only 168 grams of carbs. So I've got a lot of carbs left. I've nearly got 150 grams of carbs left. So after this, when I go home, these next two meals, I could probably even have a fucking treat if I like. Two popsicles, that's only 20 grams, you know, that's not a, that's not too crazy. But I can't stress enough, you really do need to be anal with this kind of stuff. And not because you have to only eat a specific amount every meal, every two hours, or anything like that. The more important part is being anal and really knowing like every gram of everything that you're eating over the course of the day. Because that will actually give you a real idea of your calorie intake. Because if you're just guessing, man, you're not... You're shooting blind. You don't really know where you're aiming for. You could have one day where you feel like you eat a lot. Another day where your appetite was just a little lower for some reason. You still feel like you ate a lot. But on this day, you had 2,000 calories or 4,000 calories. And on this day, you only had 2,000. So, I mean, I've, I've been saying this this whole video. I can't stop saying it. I really think you got to start tracking your macros. And the guys who say like, oh, well, I'll, I'll just start doing meal prep. That's all you're doing. Even when you have a coach meal prep you, or you have someone else set up your diet, or you know whatever, you're having like fucking pre-made meals like that, and it's like, oh, have three of these a day for your weight. That's just macro tracking, except they set up the diet after calculating the macros when they made the meals. So like I was saying a couple clips ago, I say just track it as you go. Because then, if for whatever reason, if I had a crazy hankering and I said, I'm getting two cheeseburgers from McDonald's post-workout. That's what I want. That's what I'm going to eat. That's not necessarily a cheat meal. All that is, is 60 grams of carbs, 20 grams of fat, and 20 grams of protein, which can easily be fit into my 250 grams of protein, 70 grams of fat, and 300 grams of carbs. The difficulty there is when you eat foods like that that are very calorie dense, they don't make you feel full for that long. So... Even though you may feel like you're just kind of curbing your cravings, at you know at some point you're actually kind of setting yourself back because you're going to be much hungrier later in the day. But I'll just sit here and enjoy this, watch some uh, watch some photography videos. I'm like a total camera nerd now. If you know any cool anybody in that realm where you're kind of knowledgeable, I'm talking lenses, APS-C, full frame, whatever. If you've got any tips or critiques on the way that all this stuff is kind of recorded. I would love to hear it, you know, and don't, uh, don't think I don't read the comments. YouTube, it's pretty much got an app where it feeds every comment into one little, uh, stream. So fucking constantly every day, I'm just scrolling. I'm seeing what you guys are saying. I don't, I can't like them all anymore, but don't worry. I do read them. So let's cut to meal number four. This is just the weirdest thing. So I come home to find my little water jug with two little... Well, with a couple little holes in them, let's, uh, I wonder how often that happens. I don't think you would do that, little Rio. You're, uh, you're the nice kitty. You're the nice one. Now, your little brother, on the other hand, not so convinced. You got anything to say for yourself? Hey, nicest cat you've, cuddles, purrs, everything else. You get three Chipotle, uh, soft tacos in this guy's mouth. You'd think you're dealing with a fucking tiger, I swear. In terms of a little fridge update. Let's see what we're working with here. A variety of vegetables. I uh, 
look, I don't understand the fucking allure. Like, I get dogged on so bad. Like, Sam, I just watched your second full day of eating. You didn't have one salad. I mean, look, I, I get what you're saying, but take it. I mean, I feel like if you're slamming your vitamins and getting enough red meat, you're kind of hitting most of your micronutrient needs. But either way, about two pounds of cooked potatoes, every sort of condiment under the sun, half of them being the, uh, the low calorie option, especially the mayonnaise. I'm trying to chill out on my, on my fat intake. I'm running a little bit low on eggs. These will probably be gone by the end of the night. No idea how that got there. And then every time I go to Chipotle, I get extra little um, fucking soft tacos just to kind of save them for later. Totally, totally trash in terms of cost efficiency. But, you know, it's like 600 calories and three, and they disappear like nothing. The only issue is, right there, it's a goddamn battle scar. A certain somebody who we don't need to name almost got a hold of all these and scurried off. A little bit of a quicker, a little bit of a quicker upload this day, this time, but yeah. So no more forearms. That'll be the last forearm day for a little bit, because I'm starting to tell, like, uh, you know, every time I finish forearms, that I do a little forearm pump check, you know, where you're trying to emulate that, uh, like that Lee Priest shot. It's like the forearm bulge here, it's overpowering my tricep. So what that tells me is, I want my triceps to get some more stimulation. I, I can chill out on. Uh, I can chill out on forearms. So, back is going to be the lift tomorrow, but you're not going to see that until tomorrow. So, let's uh, let's grab these guys. There we go. Smile. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, they're fun. So, a little update. These two uh, didn't get them as kittens. They were. They were rescues from the shelter, which honestly kind of saves you some fucking time, you know? I mean, Oliver at my parents' house, the other cat we have, he's a, we got him as a kitten, but, you know, then you, like, it's, it's fun having a fucking kitten running around, but honestly, the cats are kind of self-sufficient. I mean, once they're, once they're full grown, they kind of know what to do. So, take it, uh, just a little thought for you. Honestly, having a cat running around, just makes your house feel like a home. But what I was going to say to actually reference something other than just the, uh, the fridge and having two cats running around is when it comes to locking in, I think there's a little bit of a like romanticization or romantic, you know what I'm saying? Where it's like, okay, yeah, once I lock in, then I'm going to be having fun. And it's not like seriously the case yet. I mean, not immediately, but. I think what you're really trying to aim for is reaching a point of, I don't want to say stability, but kind of, what's the word? Equilibrium, you know, where you can actually have a routine day by day, which you can stick to and which isn't too challenging for, you know, what you can handle and will get you results. So that's a, that's kind of a fucking trifecta of how I want my bulking phases, dieting phases, my training in general to be like, I want it to be easy enough that I can do it, which does not mean make it easy. It just means kind of be tough to handle it, make it a, uh, you know, be consistent with it and actually get results. So for the beginner, and this is why I, uh, I kind of like the nature of lifting itself because it's very beginner friendly because you don't have to be like, <laughs> You don't have to do a set of squats until your nose bleeds to get quad stimulation as a beginner, right? The strength, the, uh, I, not even strength curve, the fucking, um, the difficulty curve of working out, it's the same as anything. It's like a fucking, uh, it's maybe not an exponential, maybe more like a, more like a logarithmic or something, or a, like a root sort of function. Easy in the beginning, you know? You can do any, I mean, dude, you could put somebody on a, don't even tell them anything. Just say, do some leg extensions pretty hard. N nothing else could change. Their quads are going to grow a little bit, you know, and they're barely doing, you know, let's say they just go to failure a couple times, like twice a week. Yeah, they're, they're going to get some quad stimulation as a beginner because you're most susceptible to gains right when you've started working out and you're not used to it yet. But over time, you're going to get used to that stimulus and to counteract that acclimation, you got to go harder. So that's uh you know, that seems kind of tricky. It's like, oh, the longer I work out, the harder I have to work out. Oh, dude, that just sounds like I'm never going to make fucking progress. It's like every lift, I have to go harder than the last one. 
but if you push yourself, then every lift you're going to be a better lifter than you were before. And a better lifter doesn't necessarily mean like, oh, I have the best form, I have the best uh, workout split, like I'm, uh, I'm locked in. You know, I just, uh, I just bought the FST RP strength program and everything else. Like not to, not to dog at anybody's specific program, I mean these guys know what they're doing. But when I think of somebody as being a more advanced and experienced lifter, like yeah, you know, you want to be reasonably informed about every sort of style and like set you know, approach that you can do, like rest, pause, stuff, tempo, everything else, really squeeze. Like actually be able to like flex your pecs on a uh, on a chest press and not just you know push the weight on like a Smith press or anything else. But when I think of a more experienced lifter, I'm thinking of somebody who's just fucking like intense. You know, they're comfortable with what they're doing and they love it. So. Like, yeah, I mean, take some time, think about trying new shit. Every time you see somebody at the gym, at least that is reasonably approachable, you know, maybe just fucking talk some smack to them. Every time I see somebody doing, um, doing a machine I don't like, or maybe not every time, but sometimes I'll, I'll ask them, it's like, you like that? Don't know, not to make it sound like weird, but it's like, do you like that machine? You know, I, I, it doesn't really do it for me. It's like, what a, it, it's, you know, because everybody's fucking got different limb lengths and different, uh, you know, joint angles sometimes even um even asymmetrically like for me sometimes i um i'm a little bit picky about like preacher curls especially like a machine preacher with both arms at once because my right arm like it's kind of got a little curve to the right like just barely nothing that you'd like jump out like whoa what the fuck's wrong with that guy but just a little different and the left one's a bit straighter like this feels like pretty straight down for me this one's a little off axis so what that means is like if I try to do a um, like a double-sided movement, I might feel more on the left side and less on the right. I mean, it's just... So getting back to what I was saying, like the guy who's really getting into it, in a way, he kind of just isn't necessarily seeking satisfaction from the results. He's more so getting a daily kind of feeling of accomplishment just by knowing that he's doing what it takes to get the results that he wants. And if you can get yourself in that mindset, then dude, there's no, there's no fucking limit. If you can be a, like if somebody was trying to walk a, um, I don't even know, 100 miles, super marathon, or uh, what do they call it? Either way, you know, the point isn't necessarily, oh, I'm so uncomfortable until I get to the end. Oh, now I'm happy. It's like, in a way, you kind of have to be satisfied each step, each mile, each everything else, because if you're not, then you're kind of just banking on like, okay, once I finish this, then I'll be satisfied and I get to be happy about myself. And it, it's just like such a, a rough approach, you know? And I think uh, a lot of people kind of get that because when you think about your goals, it's very easy to say like, okay, I'm not good enough until I can reach them. I'm not, I'm not good enough until I get this or until I, until I can say this or be this or anything else. And I mean, just not that I've like done something like that where I've thought, okay, I'm going to be happy once I can bench 315 and I'm not happy until I get it. I've never really kind of played into that thought process, but even just from looking at other people, every time anybody talks about the results that they've gotten, if they've ever done something seriously fucking cool, they're never, they never say it's like, I had to treat myself like total dog shit until I got it. And then I get to be happy. It's like, no, they fucking started to love the process, right? So get a, get happy having some food in your fridge, right? Every time you run in the kitchen, I mean, act like these fucking, these cats, man. Every time we shake the food bowl, dude, they're fiending for it. So honestly, I mean, fuck, man. It's, uh, <laughs> I'm sure if you had a plate of chicken, rice, and some kind of barbecue sauce or whatever else, like a full-on meal, and your dog got a hold of it, guess what? That meal is going to disappear in two seconds. Why couldn't you do that? You know, but back to, uh, back to the regular training split, chest, back, arms, legs, repeat, I, I see a lot of comments that are, that I don't, well, I, it's just kind of from a point of being misinformed. You know, when people think of a workout split, they always think, okay, the weekly split. And it's just, it's just the way we think about it. We say pushable legs, we say Arnold, like it's all based on like a one week time frame. So when people will talk about my split in like comment sections, they'll say like, oh, you know, he does every muscle group once a week. It's like, not exactly. Not exactly. I end up hitting everything twice, well, twice every eight days. So nearly twice a week. I, uh, I probably would not recommend a once a week muscle training style workout plan. Twice a week is about right. So twice every eight days. 
That's only a little different, but they're, uh, they're tussling a little. But yeah, back to normal, so I'll see you tomorrow for a back day. All right, so you're very precariously balanced on the cereal box, but portion one of breakfast, three scoops of, I mean, really any kind of fucking cereal. I kind of go through a few. Uh, I've been doing mostly the oatmeal, but I kind of wanted to just change it up this morning. But I mean, the morning meal is always going to look reasonably similar. About 150 or so grams of carbs. As many grams of fat as just necessary with whatever I'm eating. And then 50 grams of protein. So this puts me at 150 grams of carbs, including the calories and the, well, the carbs from the three cups of milk. Which isn't something to neglect, man. Three cups of milk is like 36 grams of carbs. But 150 carbs... 23 of fat, 24 of protein, all kind of, all immediately tracked. Yeah, it's not going to focus, but right there. So this will be portion one, plus two liters of uh, water with some electrolytes. And then, once I finish this, I'll get up and make a couple of eggs. Because 24 grams of protein, I mean, it's not nothing, but for me to hit 250, that would mean I've got to eat 10 meals. You know, it just doesn't make any sense to eat that little meal by meal. So I'll probably add, uh, that'd be like five eggs, but cereal first. So let's cut to uh, let's cut to the egg, the egg cooking after this is gone. These guys always need to be locked up whenever we're eating because they uh, don't take the food right off your plate. You got anything to say about that? Yeah, I guess not. I um. I would be lying if I didn't tell you that right after I had that bowl of cereal and I laid down on the couch, I took a, uh, like a 45 minute nap. So I guess this is breakfast part two. So now two bagels. Usually I'd go kind of crazy with the cream cheese, like not a full block at once. That'd be nuts. You know, nothing crazy, but like a quarter block per bagel, you know, just so I don't know how many grams of fat that is, but instead of through some, uh, just like some. 100% grass-fed salted butter on each of these, just so it's not so heavy. Because after this, I'm going to do cardio. So two bagels, 100 grams of carbs net, just about 30 grams of fats from the butter, and then six whole eggs. And here's one little tip that I actually really, well, I guess I don't, it's not a game changer when you have it. But when I don't have it, it kind of sucks. Because if you ever cook eggs, at least like scrambled with the yolks and everything else, it kind of gets a little bit of a dryness to it, you know? Whereas if you sprinkle on some kind of cheese of your liking right at the end of when you're cooking it, it pretty much stays moist the whole time. And that's really what I'm aiming for. The last thing I want to do is be sitting here scooping at a bowl of eggs and then just get kind of off put by them, you know? Like ease of consumption is a very high um, variable on my bar of uh, what I'm looking for with whatever kind of meals I'm eating. Because if I can't actually just sit here and get it down reasonably quick, like if it's if it becomes a chore to really eat a certain kind of meal, then I'm probably not going to want to do it, you know, because then it's going to take extra time. The longer each meal takes, the less time you have during your regular day doing your whatever kind of shit. So when it comes to bulking up, like obviously your food choices are going to be pretty important, but, and I, I, by food choices, I mean like types of carbs and macros and how it's going to affect your like your blood sugar and like how it actually even relax, re, uh, like reacts with your stomach. Like if uh, if dairy completely blows you up on the inside, yeah, maybe you don't have three cups of, uh, of milk with a bowl of cereal, you know. But as long as you can get in the amount of calories that you're aiming for throughout the day, which is enough to actually satisfy the goals that you're aiming for weight-wise, then dude, you're fucking fine, right? But you got to take into account the fact that eating certain fucking kinds of trash food it's got a, a, like, not even the fact that it's just bad for you. It does have a time limit of how long that's going to work. I mean, I've done it before. I've done bulks much nastier than, uh, well, you get what I'm saying. But I've got, like, three months of solid, you know, weight gain. And then after that, it's like I can't put on any more fucking size. And I can almost guarantee my whole system's extra stressed out. I've been eating, like, hundreds of grams of sugars at a time. And having everything spread out evenly throughout the day, more kind of complex, legitimate carbs, not just all sweets, things like that are what you should be aiming for. 
And then as you'll notice, the carbs are going to fucking vary today. I mean, fucking, this isn't too crazy. I mean, fucking, uh, I'm, I'm just bombing the F word, but, you know, cereal, bagels, everything else. Throughout the day, I mean, there's going to be rice, there's going to be potatoes. I'm not, it, I'm not going to worry if I have like four Reese's cups later, you know. But on the protein side of things, that's where I'm trying not to skimp. That's where it's going to be steaks, eggs, dairy products, fish. You know, I've got a bunch of tilapia in the freezer. Like on the protein side of things, that's where I don't want to skimp. Because if you look it up, there's like the protein grading scale. I'm going to try to remember and put it like right here on this side of the screen. You know, way up here, that's where you're going to see your fucking A students. Beef, chicken, eggs, milk, dairy, whey protein isolate. And as you work your way down, probably right around here, you're going to see like soy protein, wheat protein, like rice protein. There's a reason why it's extra low on the scale. So I wouldn't want to maximize my protein intake with things like that. Like these bagels each said they had two grams of protein in them each. I'm not going to count that. Like, yeah, it definitely is calories. But in a bulking context, it's just non-dedicated protein sources do not really concern me. Now, it'd be a little bit different if these were like um, uh, like fiber kind of bagels. If you've ever seen those, like keto bread. Because those are going to have like a crazy amount more proteins in them. Just because of the way they separate out all the carbs and the fibers and whatnot. That'd be something to look for. But if you if you uh, like if you look at a packet of instant rice or something, three grams of protein and you're trying to bulk up, I wouldn't worry about it. I'd rather count that three grams of protein from the ground beef I'm gonna have later than from like some random incomplete kind of a amino acid array like that. But I'm gonna sit here for a minute and then uh, can drive over to cardio. I'm not gonna we don't need two car talks in one day to the to cardio and then to the leg day. So I'll just uh, I'll just see you back here. There we go. Totally forgot to fucking edit the video yesterday. So this is the, uh, that'd be the arm day I just finished, but I've camped out in front of the computer with half a pound of ground beef. And then to counteract the dryness effect of certain kind of foods like this, I just fucking douse the thing in sugar-free ketchup. And then one slice of American cheese kind of, uh, you know, all mixed in. And then that's paired with, you guessed it, you guessed it, one pack of uh, one pack of ramen, not with the entire kind of salt pack, just because I've had so many electrolytes so far with all the water tubs. I mean, I'm pretty much fully stocked with sodium and magnesium and everything else that I'm not really concerned hydration-wise there. But anybody that gets uh, too freaked out, like, oh, there's so much, there's so much sodium in that. It's like, oh, you're, you're going to hold a lot of water. It's like... Well, not necessarily, you know, if you, uh, that's more so of an issue for somebody who drinks zero water all day and then has like a massive, like salty dinner and they're not really used to having a really like a uh, kind of controlled influx and output of, uh, their fluids. So if somebody drinks eight ounces of water a day, I'd be pretty concerned with their, uh, with their sodium intake. But if you're actually drinking liters, like I'm. I don't, I'm not going to say you need to drink a gallon a day, but if you're in the two, three liter mark, like on a consistent basis, I wouldn't freak out about not getting your, uh, or about getting too much salt in. If anything, I'd be a little bit more concerned that you might not be getting enough, uh, electrolyte intake just because, you know, it's, uh, it's kind of easy to overlook. So that's, uh, that's going to play a big role in your hydration. And then you know, two steps down the line will play a pretty serious role. And just how pumped you're going to be. And anything that's going to affect the pump is something you need to be looking at and trying to optimize such that you'll have as much fucking blood flow and sort of a, well, what other word to say than pumpage after the lift. But I'm going to finish this, get this uploaded, and we can, uh, we can cut to the car and drive over there. There we go. This is like four just kind of standard yellow potatoes. Let's wait for this guy to get to 375. And in 45 minutes, I'm going to have some perfect fucking uh, perfect carbs. There we go. We're getting close to the end game here, fellas. Let's uh, let's do a little macro check and actually see where we're at. Oh shit! You know what? Whoops. One more thing. I'd actually be fucking lying to you if I didn't bring this guy out. I don't know if I'd necessarily count this as a meal, 
But this is something which you're, well, the sooner you can learn it, the better. Your calories are gonna fucking add up throughout the day. Even if, like, let's say somebody was dieting, and, uh, you know, they might just, we've all been there, you might just take a quick little gander into the pantry. I'll just have, I'll just have three Pringles, you know, it's nothing. Just, I'll, I'll just have a couple of chips, you know, I'll just have a, I'll just have a couple of croutons, you know, there's nothing in there. You do that five, six times, dude, you just have 500 calories. And depending on how steep somebody's, like, intended diet could be, you know, a 500 calorie change in the opposite direction, that will totally fucking screw you over. But in the case of today, this whole little um, ultra, ultra pasteurized, naturally flavored, very berry, promised land, strawberry milk disappeared. Somehow it was full in the morning, now it's empty. So seven servings, each containing 10 grams of fats, and 32 grams of carbs, as well as nine grams of protein, somehow made its way from the inside of this container into my belly. Now, do I think I'm gonna fucking explode? No, not exactly. Um, it would depend if you're like lactose intolerant, which I'm sure everyone is to a degree. Honestly, I should probably try to find some kind of uh, like lactose-free strawberry milk and see if it'll um, see if it'll have any kind of different effect on me. Like, not that this really messes with me, but, you know, anybody that's drank a ton of milk, especially if they were sensitive, that could totally, uh, well, we don't, we don't have to get there while we're eating. But that adds up to, yeah, man, fuck, damn near 2,000 calories. So, 1750, that's a big-ass chunk. And it's very easy to get fucking down. So let's see the, uh, I mean, a pretty nuts amount of sugar intake, but... Not so much that I think I'm totally, you know, boned. I mean, it was kind of a 50-50-ish so far of reasonable, lower glycemic index kind of a, or glycemic, oh man, what's the word? Glyce yeah, I guess glycemic index kind of carbs. Plus, you know, some kind of sweets, some simpler foods like that. But, I mean, that's kind of just a balance for you to decide. You know, the, the, when I'm, if I'm making a full day of eating kind of video, this is not a full day of eating tutorial, right? This is merely kind of a glimpse into the things that I'm doing so I can get my 5,000 calories down, you know, my near like six, 700 grams of carbs, 120 of fats, 250 of protein from whatever sources. Now, like I said earlier, all the proteins coming from legit source, right? Dairy, solid. Beefs, solid. Eggs in the morning, solid, right? I mean, that's honestly kind of the fucking trifecta of protein, milk, eggs, and steak. So, I mean, this combo here, the steak and potatoes, I may as well be eating a, uh, an Uncrustables peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Which, now that, now, that we, uh, now that we bring that up, I should probably stock the freezer with some of those. Because that's an easy 200 calories right there per. So, um, it's, look, would it be better? Would it potentially be better gains-wise for me to do, like, meal prepped rice, chicken, steak, broccoli, eight meals a day? I mean, I, I'm not sure. I'm sure I'll, I'll, uh, I'm sure I'll lock into the point of trying that eventually. But, you know, to an extent, you can't beat the fact that the calories in certain foods, that, that's not going to change. You know, if you're eating a 500 calorie, um, you know, bowl of rice, chicken cutlet with, uh, with like kind of a teriyaki sort of mayonnaise sauce, like something, you know, plus like a bunch of like shredded lettuce. Something you would look at and say, oh, you know, that's actually pretty healthy, man. I'll, I'll get the healthy, healthy option. I'll get the, the chicken rice bowl. That's got the same fucking calories as that Wendy spicy chicken, you know? It's like, it's like, what are we doing at this point? If you're to look at a, uh, like a bowl of X grams of rice, X grams of like olive oils or like butters, and then, you know, however much steak or something, energy-wise, caloric, energy-wise, it, it's the same as something of an equivalent value. So... The only problem for me, which I've kind of found, is if I eat, well, really kind of too much, too fast, then that kind of overloads my system. You know, like I'll get to, um, and it's kind of crazy how I've done this like multiple times in a row, knowing what I actually should have done, but still doing it just because it made sense in my mind. But, you know, reverse two years, reverse two and a half years, almost three years, when I started really trying to bulk up, in my mind I'm thinking, okay, 
I want to start a bulking phase. All right, let's eat 5,000 calories every day. Boom, off the rip. So that's like going from 3,000 calories to immediately 5,000 and then just keeping it there indefinitely. Now, you know, two and a half months go by. Holy shit, man, because I'm, I'm tracking my weight. I plug it into my, uh, like, a Google Sheets on the, like, daily. I can see it kind of graphed as a plot. Dude, it just fucking blows up. But then after two and a half months of eating that much, plus, you know, the fact that it's, like, bagels with a bunch of cream cheese and, like, sweets and everything else, it just stressed out my whole fucking system to the point where, like, not that I, like, felt bad or anything. I still felt normal, like, bulked. But eating any more or trying to eat in excess so that I could continue that weight gain projection or uh, weight gain, uh, well, yeah, but like projection, it just wouldn't happen, you know? So then I'm sitting there for two months at the same weight, not growing at all, just maintaining because I can't push myself to uh, the caloric intake of actually gaining weight. And then I just wasted like two and a half months of bulking for no reason. I sh as soon as I hit a plateau for beyond like three weeks, if I can't somehow get around it, then that's my cue that this bulk is over. I better start dieting down, reset, start from scratch. But as of late, a, uh, aka the last two bulks, the primary change, well, this one, you know, the food intake's a little bit, a little bit cleaner as well, more oatmeal, more cream of wheat, you know, more like legit carb sources. But one thing that's been consistent over this bulk and the last one was I've been eating slowly and increasing my calorie intake over time. You know, so this bulking phase is going to be like six months long. That's, uh, I forget, when did I start it? Was it in, was that in July? July? I, uh, da, da, da. It's almost been two and a half months. Yeah, I think beginning of July or so. So going from then to probably, you know, Christmas time-ish, maybe just late November, like six months. Month one, eat when I'm hungry. Month one, it's like, okay, I'm, uh, I just came off of like 2,500, 3,000 3, uh, 3, calories from my dieting phase. It's probably not going to do me any good to put myself in a 2,000 calorie jump from that to 5,000 every day. That just doesn't make any fucking sense. Because what's going to happen is that's going to take me out of the fucking green zone. You know, there's a sweet spot when it comes to your calorie intake. Given whatever your metabolism is at at that current moment. So if I just did two months of dieting, my metabolism has slowed down. The amount of calories it takes for me to just stay alive every day has now decreased, which in a kind of evolutionary standpoint would fucking make sense. If food gets scarce, you don't want to be burning off tons of excess energy. You want to kind of slow yourself down, cool your engines, drop your RPM. But when you start bulking from a phase of dieting or even just maintaining, there's no need to just jump start to fucking as much food as you can eat every day. Now, depending on what your appetite is, that could be the case. You know, if somebody has a real, really, like, low appetite, that's usually the case of the hard gainer. Then, yeah, for them, it might feel like force feeding to eat 2,500 calories. And I'm not, I'm not joking when I say that. I mean, some guys, it's just not a... They just don't have that in them to just keep fucking eating. They just feel so full so quickly, which, I mean, really sucks. But it is just kind of... That's just one side of the coin. On the other side... That guy gets to be pretty lean year-round with no effort. So it's always kind of a give and take, but you don't get to choose your dice there. But what I was gonna, what I was kind of looping back around to was, sure, I want to eat in a surplus, but if I eat too much, then what am I doing? I'm just wasting that energy. If I were to eat 10,000 calories tomorrow, guess what? <laughs> However many ca thousand calories of those I can actually use for you know muscle recovery and building, anything above that... What does your body do with stored energy? Dude, instant. Love handles, glutes, legs, lower back. I'm just putting on fat. I'm not trying to bulk uh, body fat here. We're trying to bulk lean, contractile tissue. So if you can kind of imagine a little bit of a gauge here, right? If I were to eat, okay, well, you know, it's month one. I just finished eating 3,000 calories a day for the last two months. Let's, let's just try to keep it around 3,500, right? A moderate surplus. But what's going to happen is after, you know, however long, usually I kind of judge it month by month, but it could even be just a few weeks. That's going to be my new baseline. I will now have gained like five, 10 pounds of weight, whatever. Now my body's burning that 3,500 calories off every day. I'm no longer gaining weight. So each month in kind of a basic term, I got to up the ante. I got to increase the amount of food that I'm eating. And if I don't, 
then, you know, no ifs, ands, or buts about it. Even if I was eating 3,500 calories of chicken, rice, and broccoli, and, you know, my, uh, my Brussels sprouts and everything else, that can be gaining muscle, at least not in a particularly fast fashion, because I'm not eating enough food to fucking fuel it. You know, it's simple give, uh, it's simple um, supply and demand, right? My body's kind of demanding, like, oh, shit, man, well, actually, actually, I'm kind of, I was about to say something kind of smart, but I totally lost my understanding of how that was going to go. But you get the gist. If I don't give my body enough fuel, it's, it's just going to run off enough to stay the same size, and I'm going to be walking around the same 260 pounder I was yesterday. But that's not the point here. So what I'm getting at is beyond the importance of food selection, I believe is just fucking food intake. You know, you're not going to grow if you don't eat enough. And that's something which um, I would put a rather large wager on. Right. Let's uh, let's see somebody legitimately say, Sam, you can gain two pounds a month main gaining. I've tried it indefinitely for the rest of your life. Now, I don't think anybody would make a claim so crazy as that. But, you know, let's just cover all bases here. So in the context of actually trying to gain weight, dude, have some treats. Right. Drink something that's going to let you fucking like a like a thing of chocolate milk or whatever or a protein shake with like some Reese's cups blended into it or like you fucking go to McDonald's. Now, I do not mean that on the regular. If you constantly eat complete shit foods for the majority of your diet, then yeah, that's going to screw your system. Your metabolism is going to get fucking weird in your gut biome. Like this isn't something you might wake up and like immediately feel, but it is going to reflect in your training. But I think I'm on like a I feel like I'm on a 60-40, maybe more like a 70-30 kind of split in terms of my calorie intake. Not from the protein side of things, but the carbs and fats. It's like 70%-ish over the last kind of month or so. Legit. Proteins or, no, what am I saying? Potatoes, rice. I think the ramen's legit. It's, I mean, it's kind of processed, but still rice. (gasps) Tons of oatmeal, the cream of wheat, everything else. And then that other 30%. Yeah, I'm going to have a fucking bag of fruit snacks. I'm going to have 100 grams of simply uh, simple carbs post-workout, spike my insulin, get some uh, you know, anabolic response. So somebody was asking me today, it's like, all right, I want to start, I want to start bulking up. Should I, should I do the clean bulk or, or should I kind of do a, you know, a crazy dirty bulk? And it's like, do the bulk that lets you gain weight. If sitting in front of um, just a baked potato with some sour cream, and then a half pound of ground beef seven times a day is your thing. Like, you can really eat that quick. You have no problem. You never get sick of it. I'm jealous. That's fucking sweet, right? Keep going. You're gaining muscle. That's perfect. I have nothing to say. If you're legitimately gaining muscle, then what are you looking for me for? Right? You obviously know what you're doing. But the issue is, like, if you're not eating enough, then, you know, what are you going to do? So that's where... It's talking about that little green zone is something which I'm kind of a pretty strong fucking proponent of. So as long as the amount of calories that you're eating is within this green zone of like, okay, I'm eating in a surplus. I'm eating like more food than my body needs. So that means it's going to have excess energy to over, uh, what's the word there? Over, uh, fuck, what's, overcompensate muscularly, right? AKA fucking hypertrophy, getting bigger what we're all here for. Plus, you know, putting on a little bit of body fat, it's just the nature of things, can't really be avoided. So if you can't get into that green zone calorie-wise, dude, you gotta add something. But that does not mean overshoot it, eat 6,000 calories a day of like protein shakes and candy. All you're gonna do is get yourself fat as fuck, which I know I'm putting that very bluntly, but I've seen it. You know, I see it all too many times like, you know, younger kind of guy, it's like, all right, I'm going to start bulking. And I'm, I'm kind of part of the problem here because I keep hyping up like the, uh, like the 200 pounder kind of thing. But I mean, 200 pounder lean, you know, it's not necessarily a good thing. And I mean, I definitely wouldn't want to catch myself doing it to get to a point of a level of bulkness where I've got like 50 pounds or more of body fat to deal with. You're totally screwing yourself because you know how long that's going to take you to get off. And that's not to, I'm not dogging anybody who already has that and they're on kind of a fat loss style journey. 
But if somebody was already at a baseline level of leanness, you know, 12, 15%, to put yourself up at 40, just for the sake of saying like, dude, I'm 240. Like that really, I mean, do whatever you want. I'm not your dad, but I never look at that and think, man, this guy knows exactly what he's doing to reach his goals. So, I mean, you gotta look at it a case by case basis. But all that is to say, if you're not gaining weight, you need to eat more food. And if you're not losing weight, all these same things apply, just flip them around, right? So this green zone calorie wise of gaining weight, getting bigger, getting stronger, making the results that you want, there's two of them, right? There's one up here in the surplus and then there's one down here in the deficit. So if you're trying to lean down, same thing. You know, if your calorie deficit to gain or to lose one pound of, uh, one pound of fat a week, if that's 2000 calories, if that's 1800 calories, if that's 2500 calories, if you're kind of a bigger dude, then as long as you hit that calorie number, dude, your food choices don't even fucking matter. Honestly, I think you're much more variable with the foods that you can get away with eating in a dieting sense than you are in a bulking sense. Because for me, I mean, I've, you got to think, I've had the most experience out of at least a few characters of trying to bulk up on just pure, like, sweets and everything else. It just doesn't work. At least not for that long. Like, I can make some quick, like, two, maybe, like, three-month gains historically. But then I just hit a wall where I'm, like, my system's so kind of... I don't even want to say stress, but it's, like, just... It's reached a point where I just can't continue down that path of food intake. Whereas, dieting-wise, I mean, you could do it. The issue is... It's got its own set of problems because if you eat sweets when you're trying to diet down, that's just going to fucking make you even hungrier afterwards because your blood sugar is going to be going bananas. So when you're dieting down, even though, I mean, you could get away with 1,600 calories of like a pack of uh, Krispy Kreme, you know, half a pound of steak every meal plus whatever, if that all added up to 1,600 calories, but that's not feasible. You know, nobody's going to do that because it's like, it's just not filling. So that's where your diet should be full of foods which are low density calories, you know, actually gonna fill you up, right? Get in like some keto bread or some protein pancakes and random shit like that. But it, you know, it's, it's kind of a flip side of both sides of the coins. If you're trying to bulk up, I'm trying to eat foods which I can get down reasonably quick and are pretty calorie dense. I mean, fucking potatoes, that's straight to the source carbs wise. Same thing with like pastas and rice and oatmeal and cream of wheat. And then the protein's always going to be as dense as it gets, as long as you're actually eating like a dedicated protein source. But if I'm bulking, I don't eat kind of quicker, simpler meals like this. If I'm dieting down, that's where I'm going to be a bit more, a bit more fancy with it. You know, that's where you're going to catch me with like meal prepping myself 10 turkey sandwiches with keto bread, you know, weighing out every gram of everything and like tons of lettuce, tons of, uh, you know, just mustard, low fat mayonnaise, everything else just to make it have mass without added calories and then you know if i have two of those dude, it's gonna fucking fill me up but it's only you know costing me 500 calories for the day which a 500 calorie meal that actually makes you like insanely full dieting wise if you know what i'm talking about there that's legit that's nothing to scoff at but that's enough of my little little dieting rants i need to um yeah don't um i'm probably not gonna do it tomorrow but try to remind me in the comments every so often, if you remember this, that I need to make like a, I mean, not a guide to dieting, but more like kind of a cohesive video and maybe make some fucking, uh, well, now I'm, now I'm starting to sound crazy, make some slideshows, but actually kind of get into at least what I think my thought process is dieting wise. Now there's a lot of different angles to that. So maybe I need to, maybe I'll wait a little bit longer until I've got a bit of a firmer grasp of everything else. Because don't forget, man, I'm trying to improve everything all the time. I want my training to be better over the next however many months. I want to kind of dial in the food choices that I'm making such that I can kin such that I can continue this weight gain path that I'm on right now. Because so far, <coughs> these uh, these two and a half months have gone pretty much perfectly. This is about as much weight as I would expect to gain. I mean, it's um, so 20. Let's actually just do some math here. So let's see, it's been, so today's going to be 79, I think, so 79 days, divided by 7, so 11 weeks pretty much, we're up from 240 was the beginning weight, now at just about, well, tomorrow morning is probably going to be 266, 
let's just say 265 for, so that's going to be 25 pounds. So 25, uh, yeah, I mean, two and a quarter pounds a week. That's pretty much exactly what I'm aiming for. If I was eating more than, if I was gaining any more weight than that, I mean, I'd probably just get, going to be getting a little bit softer to the point where it's, uh, I'm getting more fat than muscle. And any less, I could probably have some more room to improve. But as long as I maintain this weight gain projection, then dude, I am fucking all for it, right? Don't fix it if it's not broken. But if I run into any hurdle along the way, like let's say in two months, somehow my weight is going to fucking completely stagnate for two weeks straight. Like, like let's, let's just do a little fast forward here. It's like, fuck, I've been 273 for the last two weeks. God damn it, what can I change here? You know, that's going to be a cue for me to think, all right, I better, I better back off. I better look at this whole situation objectively and think, all right, what's, what should I change? What do I have to change here? And uh, if you can't do that, then how can you expect anything to fucking happen? You know, nothing changes if nothing changes. So as many times as you maybe step on the scale and think to yourself, all right, I'm going to make this shit happen. If every time you come to the kitchen, you're just fucking kind of being mindless about it. It's like, I want some of this. I want some of this. I definitely want some of this. Mom, can you pick up some sheets on the way home? I would love two spicy chickens. Not going to work. Not going to fucking work. It's, uh, and I know it sucks, but it's just kind of how it works. There is a really seriously powerful amount of change that you can make to your build. Changing nothing about your activity levels. Purely your food intake. So, it's something to look into. It's definitely something to look into. But I'd be lying if I told you it wasn't a chore. I'm kind of spoiled with all this stuff because I like it. The whole process of it, I mean, I mean, I get to enjoy it every fucking day. You know, like when I see comments like, oh, Sam, how can I be motivated to go to the gym? It's like, it just feels like such a fucking chore, man. It's, you know, I, I might say something. It's like, you know, just, just remember how bad you want it or like, you know, whatever. Just some kind of motivational something. But it's like, I, sometimes I can't even relate to it because it's, it's like, dude, I'm fucking excited for my chest day tomorrow. I'm excited for my back day the day after that. And I'm extra fucking excited for my arm day the day after the day after that. <laughs> and then it's just like, you know, I'll be, um, like, I'm sitting here thinking like, oh man, I wonder what I'm going to look like in four years or five years or however many fucking years, you know, it's like, I feel like I've reached a reasonable point of contentness with the fact that this is a long-term kind of situation. And I just want to make sure that, you know, on a day by day basis, I can do what it takes to get me there. And as long as I can look back, it's like, oh crap. I just gained 25 pounds in like just a little over two weeks or two, uh, two, over two months. Damn straight. Yeah. Well, let's keep this, keep, keep this train moving, you know? So if you can look back at past progress and you can tell like, all right, you may as well be a fucking stockbroker of your gains. It's like, okay, we're on an upward trend. Let's keep this bull run going. That might be a little bit of a sting to uh, any NVIDIA holders out there, but you know, what are you going to do? Right. That's the, that's the risk. But you know, just somehow try to get excited about it. That's all I can say there. But this is going to take me a minute to get down. I'm going to keep watching some uh, some Yu Yu Hakusho. Hakusho. Yeah, I remember. I remember the character now. Yusuke. Yusuke and everybody else. That's kind of fun. Just a nice kind of uh, high school anime. That's when I was... I feel like I watched so many all at once. I almost spoil myself because, like, I pretty much watched all the S-Class shows to the point where when I see, um, uh, what's it called, like, Kyojin? What, when I see, like, new shows now, it's like, eh, that's, that just looks stupid. Any Boruto fans in here? If you are, try to make a Boruto case because I, <laughs> I don't get it, man. But let's, uh, let's actually do a calorie check. I didn't even do that earlier. So this puts me at... 220 grams of protein, 150 grams of fat, and 552 grams of carbs. So, this isn't technically the last meal, but I know what the last one is, so that's it's kind of just a mute point. But last meal is going to be a little, uh, little kind of a bottled sort of protein shake. The powder has kind of been fucking me. It's like, eh. Just get a shaker bottle dirty. It's like I'd rather get like a 12 pack of some kind of protein shake I like and um, just have it already pre blended for you. No clumps, no mess, no nothing. But one of those plus a bagel, that'll put me in a perfectly flat 5,000. 
then I can go to bed and have myself some Vulcan dreams. But yeah, train to 280. Train to 280 has not slowed down one bit. <laughs> so let's uh, just get comfortable. We got another four months. So I'll see you tomorrow for chest. Is complete. I didn't really, all I had to do was kind of sit around. I was a little bit more on the actual fabrication side of our little thing. So we were watching one of our guys, uh, Shoe How. He was wiring this thing up like a goddamn electrician. But post cardio, went home, took a shower, got on the bike over here. So if you're ever in a fucking, I don't even want to say rush, like that's not the right word. But if you've got to be somewhere for a reasonable amount of time and you don't have prepped meals already ready, then I will say this is not even just a dieting meal. Cause like, I mean, this isn't like zero carb. This whole thing is two scoops of protein powder and then two packets of um, strawberry flavored oatmeal just kind of mixed together. So this is 50 grams protein. I think five-ish of fat, maybe six, and then about 45 grams of carbs. I, I may be wrong with those numbers. I forget when I tracked them, but 50, it's like a 450 calorie shake. So definitely a meal. I would not count this as just a little drink. Like this counts. And dieting wise, it definitely fucking counts. So if you eat in 2,500 calories worth of real food, and then you add a shake on top of it, I'm not going to say that a protein powder shake is as good as like sitting and eating a steak in terms of the protein quality as well as the nutrients and everything else. But I think protein powder has a place, especially for situations like this where you kind of want to have something ready to go. So usually, actually when I was in high school, I used to make a few of these dry. You know, I leave the shaker cup in my, in my backpack and then throughout the day, usually twice, once between getting to school and lunch and then once between lunch and before I left. Because if you're going to school, if you're a high school dude watching this and you're trying to bulk up, if, fuck, the time period between school starting and lunch, what is that, fucking five hours? And more likely than not, you didn't really eat your breakfast before an hour or in, an hour before school started. So dude, you're fucking, that's a five hour gap of food middle of the day where you just haven't eaten anything unless you've got like a snack or something with you. So in terms of the protein shakes, I find they're most beneficial just because they're fucking, it may as well be a goddamn MRE. I can have a Ziploc bag with two scoops of protein powder and then two of these oatmeal packets in my backpack at all fucking times. And anytime I'm like, oh shit, okay, I got to eat something. Bust it out, put it in a shaker. Fucking, even if you don't have a shaker cup, I've been sipping on the Diet Pepsi this whole time. I can empty this out, rinse it out, pour it in here. That's 450 calories. Now, in a bulking context, that's 450 calories, which go down pretty easy. Dieting down, I would not want all my meals to look like this, just because, I mean, you gotta remember, this is, with the oatmeal, it makes this a little bit satiating. You know, I'm actually eating something, but usually a protein shake is not going to actually fill you up. All you're doing is drinking your calories, which typically I would advise against. But the fact that the oatmeal packets are added in here and those are actual food, that will make me feel like I actually did just eat something. So everybody's gone now. I'm just fucking loitering in here. But one tip, if you want to kind of recreate this, is... You kind of have to constantly shake it up. And this isn't like super complicated, but the oatmeal, it, it doesn't just float around. It's going to sink down to the bottom and kind of settle. Like I, I can watch it right now on the side. So as you're drinking it, if I were to just start sipping it right now, all I'd be drinking is the fucking protein powder part. And the oatmeal would just sit down here in a blob. So you kind of have to go back and forth between shaking it up to get everything evenly dispersed and then having a sip. Probably not a bad idea to let it sit for a little while. Because if you're just, 
If you made the shake, you shook it up for like three seconds, and then you tried to drink it, the oatmeal wouldn't have absorbed any fucking water, and it would just be like super dry, you know. So this is kind of taking the, taking some inspiration from like overnight oats, but a little bit more. Let's just say on a little bit shorter of a time frame. But this will put me at about, yeah, maybe f a little less than 40. No, no, a little less than a fifth of my daily calories. So I've got another 200 grams of protein for the day. Another, I think, 200 grams of carbs and like 50 more grams of fat. So set myself up for success, of course. But let's cut to, well, let's go home and cut to whatever I eat next. I I really could not tell you. I don't know what I have in the kitchen. Lo and behold, the lifter's equivalent of surf and turf. Now, the turf side, apart from... Yeah, I mean, I, I totally burned it. But not because I, like, smacked on the highest heat possible. Every time, you know, and I tell myself this every time. Anytime I try to add anything fancy seasoning wise, like with steak seasonings or rubs or whatever, as soon as I put it on something and then throw it in the pan, after like two flips, the fucker's just burnt because the onions just fucking blow up in the oil. Every time I do salt and pepper, it's perfect. But I get, I get like curious. I'm like, would it be better if I made it a little fancier? But, uh, but either way, half pound of, um, I forget the cut. I don't know, kind of fatty. Three torn up low carb tortillas. This is actually a big chunk of this meal in terms of the volume. Like when I eat this part, I am actually going to be like filling up my stomach a little bit. <coughs> um, and then like three ounces of tuna just from the Kroger sushi aisle. I'm, I didn't grab this because I thought, okay, I want some good omega threes. Really, I mean, the macros on these ones are nuts. There's no rice. All that's underneath of this is like cucumber and carrots. Three and a half grams of fat, no carbs, 17 grams of protein. I mean, it's a fucking no-brainer. So net so far, actually, I may as well just pull up the fucking, um, pull this guy up. So, yeah, after that first shake, I was at 440-ish calories, and now I'm at 1,025 after I eat all this. So I'm on track, man. Meal number two was only just about 500 calories, which is a pretty, that's pretty manageable for dieting. Like, for me to have 500 calories evenly dispersed between fats, carbs, and proteins, that is substantial enough for me to not need to go out and eat anything else for another two-ish hours. And, you know, depending on... Your schedule, your appetite, 500 calories can fucking hold you over for a little while. So coupled with this is a, a two liter of Sprite Zero, the likes of which I just like as a fucking treat. So, what's the point? Why drink a soda at all? Doesn't soda dehydrate you? You guys are nuts. I mean, if you're, if you can just drink a gallon of water straight a day and that's your thing, go for it. I'm not going to knock you. Maybe that's even fucking better. But for me, man, I mean, just having a sweeter drink or something, maybe it's just because I have a sweet tooth, but it kind of just incentivizes me to drink more. I mean, if I was just sitting here doing whatever kind of computer work I've got to do later, this two liter is going to disappear. It's just going to fucking go like that. And having a jug of water next to you when you're doing busy work or just sitting around in a dieting context, I think it is going to make you a little bit less compelled to just want to snack on something or go to the kitchen and just look around and like, oh, there's a couple of fucking, there's a few, oh, there's a bag of chips, a little scrap. Like every time you do that, that's calories being just thrown onto the pile of your caloric intake for the day. 
And odds are, after a few little, you know, kitchen trips where you just snack around, fuck, man, that could add up to 500 calories. That could be a whole meal. So you could think you're in a deficit. But if you're not really stringent with your tracking, you could get to the point where you're literally fucking eating an extra meal than you usually would, at least in terms of calorie fucking intake, in just random ass snacks that you don't even really, that you're not even really hungry for. You know, you're just kind of bored. So having a little drink of something sweet to sip on, I've always found that it's worked out pretty well. Cool. Come on. <laughs> I would be in the kitchen, but my, my roommate's down there on a call. So I'll just fucking hang out up here. But which one of these meals so far has been what you would conventionally say is like a bodybuilding dieting meal? You know, I'm not sitting here eating a blend, eating like a shake of like a tomato and an onion and fucking apple cider, apple cider vinegar. Like this is all just fucking normal ass food. You know, this a steak and the tortillas. That's just a meal that I might eat regularly bulking up. I might be a little more, more generous with the, the cut of steak that I eat and, you know, I've got more room for fats. And the tortillas, of course, would be full carb, not this sort of fibery keto tortilla. I mean, these only have two grams of digestible carbs in them each. And I saw a few comments asking about that, so I guess it is worth mentioning. When you look at the label, at least in the States, when you look at a nutrition label, when, you know, protein right there, fats right there, and the fats gets broken down like, okay, saturated, unsaturated, trans fats, same thing with carbs, you know, total carbohydrate and underneath is two subsections, right? There's, um, well, net carbs and then there's soluble and insoluble fiber. Sometimes they'll add sugar, but sugar and net carbs, that's, that's like the total. But whenever you see insoluble fiber and it'll say it, that however many grams of insoluble fiber there are per serving, those carbs do not count because those are not digestible, you know, like a fucking, you know, a cow can eat grass and a horse can eat hay because they have multiple fucking stomachs and their stomachs are designed to break down those really long strands of, um, cellulose, right? But if, if you, if you had a fucking stack of hay and that was all you got to eat, guess what, man, you're going to fucking croak in no time. Is you can't digest the insoluble fiber that's in that. And when it's made in a special way in like food laboratories or whatever else, because I don't think you could, I don't think you could make a low carb tortilla as good as this just in your kitchen. But, you know, when they combine certain like wheat extracts where it's only the fiber content, you know, they can make a pretty appetizing fucking tortilla. Like, if you gave this to somebody, they'd have no idea that it was any different than normal. It is maybe a little bit tougher, but like that's that's just a marginal change. And it's going from 20 grams of carbs per tortilla. So that's fucking, that's 80 calories right there. Three of them, that's 250 calories. That's half the value of this whole meal in just fucking carbs alone. So adding these calorie smart options can really roll back time in terms of how much food you've really eaten. Because I could sit here and add an extra 200 fucking calories to this meal just by swapping out these tortillas with full flour ones. Or, you know, maybe I can add like a sauce with the steak, like a full fat buffalo or something. If, um, if you're not such a good chef, you know, sauces like that are going to make your food a little bit more appetizing. Like things like that kind of take it away just a few key components which have a ton of fucking calories inside them. You're going to set yourself up to be able to eat less food, but actually feel fuller, you know? So that's always been the name of the game in my mind when it comes to dieting. Like in terms of size and how full I'm going to feel just from eating this, this is about what I'd expect from something I'd want to eat when I'm bulking up, but it's just a bit lower calorie wise 
It's not so calorie dense. So I can make it another few hours after only eating a 500 calorie meal. Ish. This is actually 550. The shake was 440. But plan is to uh, sit here, play on TikTok for a minute. This will all disappear reasonably quick. Uh, one little tip if you actually do end up doing a legit diet. Maybe don't scarf down your food in three seconds. Because then you give yourself no time to enjoy it. And you're just fast tracking the process of, okay, I'm hungry again. So whenever I'm bulking up, I really kind of sit down like I'm straight out of Gen Pop. And I'm, you know. Like just chowing down as quick as I can because in a bulking context, you know, I want to eat as much food as quick as possible so I don't feel full and I have trouble with it to the point where sometimes I'll even put my phone away just so I can actually focus on sitting here and eating the whole food or eating the whole bowl or whatever, like rice or steak and chicken or like if I got a crazy Chipotle order or whatever. Like eating to this comfort, it does kind of require some attention. Like this is just going to disappear passively. I want to eat all this food, but you know, when I'm bulking up, I get halfway through a meal. I'm like, oh, fuck, I'm kind of feeling sort of full. And it takes some actual effort to get down. Oh, you can't even really see the salmon. There we go. Yeah, a little. <coughs> Thank you. But let me uh, let me enjoy this meal and then we can cut to. I mean, it's already, it's close to midday. This making it look like I'm dieting down and getting leaner. But honestly, I think that's kind of a positive. You know, you got to think, even getting past like the kind of subjective, like enjoyment or whatever you're doing. If you don't, if you can't eat foods that you at least decently can stomach, you're not going to have any fun. So I almost feel like I'm kind of, <laughs> I wouldn't say a bad example but I might make it look a little easier than it is because this is fucking nine ounces of steak and then a pack of instant ramen. But in the context of like the actual calories, you know, about 70 grams of protein, 20 of fat, 60 of carbs, and then another 20 of fat. So this is kind of a big hit. This is 40 grams of fat all at once. So usually I'd probably want to spread that out throughout the day, but I was kind of sparse. So saving calories for later, that's always going to be an easier move than having like a big breakfast and then having to shrink your meals down before bed. Because if before, if this was my last meal and I didn't have any room calorie wise for a thing of ramen and I had to eat like only four ounces of steak, I'm sure I'd eat it, lay down in bed. And I guess depending on how tough I am, I'd either go to sleep and deal with it or get up and say, I'm fucking hungry, have a treat, you know, and nobody's watching. So don't worry, or actually do worry, because I know that if you're trying to diet down and you get up at night and you have a few scoops of ice cream, that feeling that somebody's watching you, that's me, because I know you're cheating. But you can make it easier on yourself by kind of at least trying to spread your calories out evenly throughout the day. But this puts me at, um, well, let's, let's actually just see. So 2050, I've got 70 more grams of protein left. And then I've actually overshot my fat goal. Uh, I was only supposed to eat 70, and this is going to put me at 88. But I'm not freaking because I can just kind of reduce the amount of carbs that I eat. You know, I want to do mainly carbs. Like, I wouldn't want to have the rest of my energy just from fats. Like, I still want to have a decent amount of carb intake. But if I go over and kind of have more of a fat-heavy day, then if I have an extra, you know, 500 or 200 calories of fat for the day, then I would just subtract that many calories from the carbs. Because it's not so important that I hit a specific number for either one. It's however much energy and calories I'm getting from both of them combined. So that leaves me with about... Well, actually, let's just look. Oh, shit. That's like 700 more calories. It's really... I'm going to have about this much steak again in like, honestly, probably like an hour. Usually I'd spread them out 
but it's getting kind of late. I want to get to bed at a reasonable time. But I'll probably have the other steak that they uh, that I had graciously cooked for me, and then that's gonna put me at like. So then I got I might I could literally have this exact meal again. Actually, I probably will. So, but I guess let's cut to the future where I'm eating the exact same thing. But at the end of this, I should still be at. Actually, not even should. I'm going to be under my calorie deficit, and I can go to bed a happy camper. Well, let's, uh, let me just enjoy this in peace, and then we can cut to that. Which may change. Instead of the ramen, maybe I'll have like a, like a popsicle or something. As long as it's within the calorie limit. Final calorie count for the day with the addition of this six ounces of top round cooked weight, one cup of lemonade, one scoop of protein powder, and the four fish oil tablets, which fish oil, it's fats, you know, they've, even on your multivitamins and your fucking fish oil, you can't escape looking at the macros. We've got a small guest, but, Final calorie count for the day adds up to 2,682. Get out of here. So 2,682, 2,700-ish. I can't. I have my limit set at 3,000 because I'm not trying to, well, I when I was a little bit lighter, I would drop my calories down to 2,500 to diet down. But as you get bigger, when you have more muscle on your frame, not even just being more active, but having to keep all this muscle oxygenated from breathing and moving around and everything, it just it just takes more energy. So this diet, I've kind of set the upper limit at 3,000. But in a dieting context, if you have a day where you're under, it's not really going to hurt you. you know, if I had a day where I ate like nothing, the next day I'd probably rebound and eat extra, which that would be pushing it. But if you're a few hundred calories shy, like let's say it's, I mean, right now it's fucking one o'clock. If I was to see like, oh, I've got 300 calories left and, you know, eat it just because I have 300 left, I don't think it's really necessary. So if you're ever under your calorie goal, which usually is kind of rare, fuck man, just go to sleep and enjoy it. That's an extra 300 calories worth of deficit, which is about like a tenth of a pound of fat. Because one pound of body fat in your body, you know, all this little, any pudge that you got on you, one pound of it is about the equivalent of, I think, 3,000, 3,300 calories. So for me to stop at 2,700 instead of 3,000, that means that today I will have lost an extra 0.1 pound of body fat-ish. You know, not like, it's not that direct, but it, it kind of is that direct. So... That along with the nice cup of fucking NAC and fish oil and multivitamins and biotin and everything else under the sun. I'll probably just take this now so I don't have to deal with it after I eat. You know, one thing that I notice, and this may be a little bit TMI. Actually, no, it totally is, but I'll say it anyway. Whenever I'm bulking up, I can tell that I have a much harder time taking my vitamins at the end of the day than I do when I'm dieted. Like just then, that was a full fucking mouthful of everything. And with just one sip, swallow it down like nothing. But when I'm fully bulked and I try to do the vitamins, it literally fucking triggers me. Like, so I've got a little bit of a story to tell, not necessarily one I'm proud of. But it was post-workout, late as, late as all heck. I think it was like 2 a.m. I just finished pounding. I was doing the dextro shake at the time. So 100 grams of carbs, 50 grams of protein, and just one like 16-ounce shaker. Or maybe it was a 20-ounce. But I had just slammed that, which is already kind of an unpleasant experience because it's a big shake of just like sugary. Like, but I just finished drinking that. My stomach's already upset. I come into the kitchen 
try to slam a whole mouthful of vitamins like that just to be done with it so I could go to bed. And at halfway, like just halfway down, like like half of them come back up and I need to drink some more water. And I'm sitting there for like a minute hovering over the sink, just trying to compose myself because I've, look, long story short, that full shake got blown into the sink and I had to make another one to make up for it. So, uh, word of the wise, if you can tell you're kind of pushing yourself food wise, maybe do one multivitamin at a time or spread them out throughout the day instead of, uh, you know, triggering your vom reflex. But honestly, I don't even think that that's not the vitamin's fault. That's just because that's a, uh, that's just a nasty fucking shake. But 255 grams of protein, 110 grams of fat, and 168 grams of carbs. So my carbs would have been a little bit higher if I had less fats, you know, because my goal was only 70 grams of fat. So I could have had an extra 80 grams of carbs. Because I'm not sure if you know this or not, but a gram of protein has four calories, a gram of carbs has four calories, and a gram of fat has nine calories. So, you know, that's, uh, that's just something to take into consideration. That's sort of another reason why I don't mind having higher carbs when I'm dieting down, because I can physically eat more grams of food in carbs and still be about at the same calorie limit. You know, because if I'm holding 500 grams of carbs or like 100 grams of carbs versus 100 grams of fat of whatever variety that could be in, in terms of food, this is 900 calories. This is only 400, even though they weigh the exact fucking same. That's uh, That sounds kind of silly. It's like the feathers and steel sort of thing, but whatever. So that's a good day to me. As soon as I sit down, make this steak disappear. And the only reason I'm adding the protein shake in is because th these this six ounces of steak only added up to 230 grams of protein for my daily, like for the whole day. So I just added a scoop of uh, some fucking chocolate ISO H1 to um, just kind of bump it up. Not that I think it would really matter. I mean, when I say a gram of protein per pound of body weight, it's not like that's a cut and dry number. Like if you eat less, you're not going to grow. And if you eat more, your kidneys are going to explode. No. But that is something I can, like a lot of this stuff is, you know, things that have worked for me. And I've kind of uncovered that by trying different things. But there are a few things which I say where I'll kind of add a little bit of a, a disclaimer where I'm like, okay, this is actually something I would recommend for the general populace. And a gram per pound of body weight, per pound of lean body weight, is about right. I can say that with, with reasonably certain, or with a reasonable certainty that I'm not going to give anybody bad advice. So, I'm going to sit here and enjoy this. And then just, what was this, day number 20, diet-wise? At this rate, I really don't think I'm going to see day 60, but we'll have to see because, you know, it's not like I'm itching to put on body fat, but I do want to get back into an actual growth state. But I think I just have to kind of curb my enthusiasm for being huge and bulked up and get a little bit more excited about being super veiny and vascular and fucking freaky and shredded, which is cool, but... In my mind, I almost feel like when I diet down, I'm like pausing my progress because I'm not growing. All of these workouts that I'm doing for this entire dieting phase, I am not growing any new muscle. All I'm doing is maintaining the muscle that I've already built and then slowly peeling off the fat layer that surrounds me. So in a way, I think it's probably just because I'm such a meathead and I think not growing muscle equals bad. But, I, you know, I do kind of think that. So I, uh, I almost use the analogy that like the dining phase is where I turn around and I look at the view and the bulking phase is when I turn back towards the mountain and start actually climbing and getting higher up. But the steak combined with some TikToks, I'm sure I'll have some 
sweet lifter dreams tonight. But I, I don't know if I'd say this is a, well, no, this is pretty much a typical fucking dieting day. I didn't do as many of my dieting hack foods as I usually do. Uh, I guess I'll save that for next time. But usually, kind of midday, I would bust out some like low carb tortillas with some low fat peanut butter mixed with like zero fat or with zero carb maple syrup. So it's kind of just like a sweet dip that's mainly just carbs and protein, as well as all the fiber from the low carb tortillas. Or, oh yeah, I didn't even do my omelet. Yeah. I'll make sure that the next full day of eating, I actually run through some of my specifically diet friendly foods. Because today was more so just eating in a diet friendly way. Uh, because I did kind of wait till later in the day to start, you know, really chowing down and having my meals. So that does make it a little bit easier to stay in a deficit. But regardless of what kind of time frame or meal sizes or frequencies that you want to do, I am not joking when I say that your calorie intake is the number one factor stopping you from either losing body fat or gaining size. So if you're going to do anything this year lifting wise or, you know, make some kind of change in terms of your, you know, muscle growth, fuck man, even if you're a power lifter, a surplus is going to do you good. If you're going to make any change soon and really kind of, I'm not even talking like optimizing your diet like a fucking Olympic athlete. But I just mean getting a little bit more knowledgeable about what you're eating, how it's going to affect you, maybe eating specific foods at certain times instead of just, you know, eating randomly. Because there is an allure to not giving a fuck. And I don't mean that in a mean way. It's like some dudes just want to come to the gym, work hard, and just, you know, eat what they want. And like, that's, that's just their, their shit. That's their prerogative. But if you know, like, yeah... I, I, do, I think I do want to take this lifting thing a little more seriously. I do want to put a little more energy into it, try to see some more results. Like, I'm not really, like, I've been working out hard and for a long time, but I'm not really satisfied with where I'm at right now. You know, I think I could be doing more. Diet improvement, if, especially if you're kind of just eating whatever, or maybe like having a protein shake now and again, in, you know, making moves diet-wise especially if that's you and you haven't really gotten into track and everything, the correlation between the results that you're going to get is going to be fucking direct. You know, with a lot of minute changes to your training, like it's going to take a while to see benefits or, you know, whatever else. But if you haven't really optimized your diet and you start to, you know, you start to consistently eat your gram of protein per pound of body weight, you know, you hit the, sim the same amount of carbs per day, you make sure you have a certain amount before you work out, the hydration too, making sure that you're drinking at least fucking two liters of water a day or more. More will never hurt you water-wise. You are going to feel it in the gym. Because, I mean, you got to think, that's the fucking fuel you're running on. If, if you put, I, what are the, I forget, what are the numbers? 80, whatever. If you put unleaded in a fancy fucking car, that shit's not going to work, Right? So if you get the kind of fancier gas that it's made for, it's going to run better. And I know that's not the same analogy because it's a fucking car, but I'm not joking when I say that that's, that's a good mindset to have food-wise. So more to come. I know I've been getting kind of, uh, I know these have been getting kind of consistent. I always just drive, lift, pose, drive back. But you got to remember, that's kind of all there is, you know? Like, if, 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 I'll make them if you want a ton of f full day of eating videos. Don't worry, man. I'll make them. Because these are for you to watch. But, yeah, don't forget, this is kind of a... This is a lot of the same thing over and over and over again. But, yeah. At least for this next few weeks, I will be making uh, pretty noticeable changes. Especially week to week. You know, visually. So, by the end of it... Oh, my goodness. I'm sure I'm just going to, once I get extra lean, I'll probably just do some posing in the morning when I wake up, even secondary to the, the pump posing, just because, uh, just so I can have a bunch of pictures and videos to look back on later on in the future. But that's all I got. Last meal, 2,700 calories, basically. That's a deficit if I've ever seen one. 
So I will see you tomorrow for arms. And I think I want to do forearms too. So it'll be a little bit of a longer one. But I'll see you then. There we go. Perfect. So three turkey melts. Now, I'll be real. I'll be honest with you. I look at this and I do not think this is going to get me lean. This is a conventional dieting food. You know, what do, what do we typically think? What's a typical diet friendly meal? Chicken rice? Just a, a salad with like a balsamic vinegar on it? Or, you know, just fucking egg whites. I mean, I could, I could have busted an egg white omelet. It would have been similar macros. I mean, what I'm really aiming for with dieting meals isn't necessarily the food itself. But what I want to do is eat maybe, I don't know, six-ish times a day, maybe, maybe less, five. If I'm busy, maybe I just only eat three big meals. But each one I want to be... You know, an even chunk of my day. If for the whole day I've got like, well, actually, let me see. Yeah, I've got like 3,000 calories for the day. That's what I'm sticking with. So if I eat, you know, maybe four times a day, then I don't want each meal individually to go over 750, right? You got four meals. That's going to add up to 3,000. So if you eat four of them, each one should be about a quarter of your whole fucking, you know, daily intake. If I were to sit here and bust out a bowl of like cinnamon toast crunch and uh, maybe have like half a ribeye with like three cups of milk, that's going to add up to 50 grams of protein. I mean, it's going to be way too high on the carbs and fats, but just for argument's sake, it'll add up to probably 30 grams of fat easy and like 150 grams of carbs. So that's within my macros. I mean, if I plug that in, I'm still in a deficit. So far, I haven't gone over my calorie limit for the day. But if you have a fucking massive meal when you're trying to diet down at any time of the day, unless it's like right before you go to bed and you're just filling out your macros for, you know, you're still in a deficit. So if you got a thousand calories left, at the end of the day, sure, I have a thousand calorie meal, whatever. But if you have a big meal early in the day and you're trying to diet down, you're just setting yourself up to have a harder time later that night because what's going to happen. I uh, actually forgot to plug in something. We got 12 grams of carbs from the electrolyte powder. But what's going to happen is if you eat a ton of your food in the middle of the day, or even like evening, by the time nighttime comes around when you want to go to bed, let's say you're, you're dieting down. You're not eating, or you're eating 2,500 calories a day. That's your limit. So for the whole day, that's how much you get. If it's 8 o'clock at night and you go to bed at midnight, and you've hit that 2,500 calorie mark, you're going to have a little bit of trouble making it that four hours before you go to sleep. Because, I mean, who wants to go to bed fucking hungry? That's why when I diet down, if I had to kind of give you a generalized tip, usually what I'm going to do is kind of save my calories for later in the day. Like not a massive breakfast. And then by the time it's like three or, I don't know, four o'clock, whatever, I've still got at least like 1,500 calories left. So I can have pretty decently sized meals and then go to bed not being hungry. I'd say nighttime is, if you were to somehow track the amount of times that people cheat on their diets, it's got to be, and they actually try to stick to it, it's got to be a night. Because you'll just run through your fucking calories during the day and then uh, I'm at my limit, but I'm fucking hungry. You know, if you got the willpower not to open up the fridge and start chowing down on whatever you can get your hands on very good but it's going to be better if you just set yourself up in a situation where you're not so prone to fucking fail but let's actually get into what, what was i saying here so three little turkey melts how many what are the macros what are the macros enter your guesses below all right did you did you enter them did you guess them so with 250 grams of this uh, deli turkey, three slices of fat-free cheese, and then three of these keto buns, these live carb smart buns. That is all adding up to a total 
plus the 12 grams of carbs from the, uh, like the electrolyte packet I'm drinking, 444 calories, 60 grams of protein, eight grams of fat, three grams of carbs, and only eight grams of fat because take a look here. Look, uh, let's see if I can zoom in. Come on. Come on, little buddy. Oh, whatever, fuck it. So, on these little American cheese slices, typically each one is like 60 calories, 50 calories. Uh, so it may not be a huge drop, because these ones are 30 calories each. Three grams of carbs, four grams of protein. But that is a substantial drop in comparison to, I mean, three of these with 60 grams of carbs, or, I'm saying grams of carbs, 60 calories each. And little things like that, if you add them up over time, during your day, using lower calorie options of shit, it's going to give you fucking an easier time. You're going to be able to eat more food because the food that you're eating literally has less fucking calories in it. If I were to eat one of these with just straight up, you know, regular American cheese, normal bread. Oh my goodness. If these were just normal buns, the, <laughs> the amount of carbs in this meal would fucking shoot up from like uh, 30 to fucking 120. So that's a pretty substantial amount of calories, man. That's almost pushing 400. And that's just in one meal alone. So in each of your meals, if you can take away you know, some of the calories, if you can kind of sneak them away and replace them with a lower calorie something or other, that's going to add up throughout the day. Honestly, if you didn't even track your macros, now this is not me saying don't track your macros. It's the fucking best way to go about everything diet related, in my opinion. But if you were not to do anything diet-wise, you know, let's say you, you get your protein in, you do track your protein. I think everybody's got a good, everyone does a good job about that. If for all your other meals for the day or whatever you eat, if you always opt for just the lower calorie option of stuff, going from, you know, just eating the regular shit normally, I think you're going to fucking start to put yourself in a deficit, man. You're going to start losing weight because you're still eating the same foods. They just now have less calories in them and it's not so when you eat something if it's really calorie dense it's going to make you feel full you know if you have a really rich uh what can i even what's a good example of this i don't know whatever if you're having something really fatty you know very dense it's going to make you feel full you know because your body does know okay i just had a ton of calories at once but you know, your stomach is also only a certain size, and usually that's what dictates your fullness level. So it's not like I'm going to eat these three sandwiches and say, oh, I'm, oh, I feel more hungry than I normally do after I eat three sandwiches. Because the amount of space that's being filled up into my fucking gullet is the fucking same. You know, so it looks the same, tastes the same. I will admit, sometimes the calorie, the low calorie option is a little worse. Worth it, though. I mean, fucking... You know how people are talking about diet soda compared to regular. Personally, I've never tasted a difference, but that's your own deal. But if you can replace typical foods that you eat with a lower calorie option, it's going to make dieting so much fucking easier. I mean, I've got the fucking powdered peanut butter instead of regular sugar-free syrup. I mean, the list goes on. You know, this kind of stuff, if you are kind of serious about trimming down, I think this is one of the best ways to go about it. You know, you could, uh, I'm not going to say you won't get lean listening to like a fasting guru, but no matter what method of diet people employ or people love, you know, because for some people they hear keto and they're like, no carbs, my body's only burning fats. Oh, well, I want to burn fat. Okay, that sounds good to me. A lot of the times just kind of personal preference is going to determine what approach people take to dieting, which is all fine. It's all well and good, whatever. But across the board, no matter what you're doing diet-wise, the only people who end up losing body fat are the people who are eating in a calorie deficit. So if instead of 440 calories of, you know, this, plus this little drink, I had, uh, I don't know, like a 
what could even replace this? I had like a protein shake and some ice cream. If I had 400 calories worth of a protein shake, pretty solid source of protein in my opinion. It's not like I want to drink shakes exclusively, but 50 grams from a shake is fine. I've, uh, I've heard that commented before. Don't worry about it. You know, maybe don't drink five shakes a day. I'm not necessarily sure that's the best approach. I'd rather eat steaks and chicken, uh, but, but enough of that. So if that's all I had, 400 calories of a shake and some ice cream, I'm, and I, you know, still stay in my fucking calorie deficit, I'm still going to get fucking leaner. I'm not going to, I'm probably not going to have as much fun doing it though. And that's because this meal is going to take me a few minutes to eat. And whenever I diet down, I do try to maybe take a little bit more time with the food so it lasts longer. Because, I mean, I am fucking hungry for this, but I, if I just scarf it down, then I'm going to feel like I want to eat more. But if I were to just drink that shake and like two scoops of ice cream, that's going to disappear in three seconds. And it's not going to make me feel full at all. And once that's in my stomach, I mean, that's all liquid. That's nothing. It's not going to make me feel like I just ate something. Whereas eating solid foods, high fiber, you know, it takes a little bit longer to eat. It's literally just more food volume. This is going to make me feel full. So I'm not hungry to come back and, you know, make me make myself something for, you know, a few hours. So it's already, yeah, no, at this rate, come on, calorie deficit is easy to fucking maintain. Now that's at the cost of less sweets. You know, you know I'm a fucking maniac for sweet treats and, you know, kids cereal and whatever else but if it's not conducive with making gains you know I think that kind of explains itself there so plan now get all my stuff packed up for later hit back and then we'll see where we go from there but I will uh, I'll get into a little bit more depth with these as time progresses what, um, I, I feel like maybe I'm kind of small minded, but I mean, all these videos are usually just drive to the car, lift, come back, and then the occasional full day of eating. So you tell me, if you don't want me to do a full cooking with, a full binging with Babish, whatever, you gotta remember, I'm not making these videos just for fun. I'm making them because you guys watch them, so... You know, give me feedback, whatever you want to see. Except for like, you know, getting oiled up at a TikTok Riz party. I'm all ears. But I'm going to sit down, enjoy this, play on my phone for a little bit. Diet is going quite well. I can't wait to see myself in a fucking month and a half. So I will catch you next time. Here we are. <clears throat> the final meal of the day. Let's, uh, yeah, let me kind of run, th run you through the process. So this is the best way that I know how to make a steak. Be it a fancy pants filet, a flank, a top round, a ribeye. It, it really doesn't matter. Any kind, right? You gotta buy a sous vide, things like 80 bucks. Put this raw steak, you don't have to season it or anything, into a Ziploc bag, you know, look it up, make sure that whichever bag you're using is sous vide safe, you know, because you are kind of cooking something in plastic. It's got to be something that's not going to totally leach too many microplastics. I mean, you probably already have a million particles per liter floating around your bloodstream anyway, but make sure you're using, I mean, any, any branded Ziploc, it's probably fine. Worth looking up though, you know, but whatever. 130 degrees, I was doing 127.5, little, little low, but more than enough, right? If you ask your dad what he likes his steak cooked to, and he sticks a meat thermometer into it when he goes on the grill to check if it's done, he's usually looking for about 130, right? So the logic with the sous vide is you cook it in its entirety, so it's all perfectly cooked, right? It's all perfectly pink, but there's no sear, there's no crust, there's no nothing kind of fancy. Like when I pulled that shit out of the bag, it just looked like a gray fucking mess. But the basic premise is step one, take it out of the bag, straight under paper towel, pat dry, 
salt, pepper, hot pan, avocado oil so it doesn't smoke up my kitchen too bad. If you try to get olive oil ripping hot, you know, guess what, five minutes later you're gonna have the smoke alarms just freaking out. But only one minute on either side, pretty much as hot as you can go. And that's it, you know, there's no trick to it. And as shown, right, perfectly done. Perfectly fucking done. So this is gonna pair quite nicely with a rather large cup of all my vitamins. I'm talking calcium, multivitamin, my fish oil. I've been doing the creatine capsules instead of the cream tea powder, just cause I'm already taking a whole mouthful of fucking vitamins at the end of the day anyway. What's four, you know, little things of creatine, right? You know, it's not too much. So this is the sucky part. This is the cool part. I'll do the nasty part first. <laughs> mm. It's a few too many for just one big gulp. You know, so when it comes to the vitamins though, you should be a little tricky about it. Like you should look up, I mean, there's a million fucking lists online and YouTube videos, just best vitamins to take for bodybuilding, for muscle building. It'll give you a solid list. Now be a little bit cautious because some of them are just going to be a waste of money because a lot of the times these vitamins are, you know, if you look at the labels, it's like, oh, 2000% of your daily recommended allowance of magnesium. The reason that there's so much is because it's not like insanely bioavailable in the forms of these kind of vitamin concentrates, you know? So magnesium citrate might be a bit more absorbent than magnesium. I don't know what the other kind is, you know, whatever. Like uh, anybody who's really maximizing their magnesium intake, they do it as a cream, you know? And the B12, like the B12 complex, that's in the cover too. You know, guys are doing B12 injections to get the maximum fucking absorption. So I'm not so crazy that I'm gonna be, gonna be doing that every day. But, you know, I do make sure I hit everything. I got some carnitine in there, I got some NAC, a couple of other sort of, uh, you know, organ support type shit. Which, if you're the guy who needs that, all right, that should be something you're doing, you know. The last thing you wanna do is be stressing out your internal organs fast forward 10 years and say, ooh, I better start worrying about my health. Not good, not cool, but this will put me at about pretty much the exact goal, 2,500 calories for the day, 250 protein, a little higher, these are definitely fatty, so that puts me at about 90 grams of fat for the day and more like 200 grams of carbs. I don't have my phone right on me, but that's what I want, you know? Next few days, maybe a week, maybe less, I don't know. I might just start the bulk on a fucking whim, but I. I am this lean pretty rarely, so that's kind of making me say, just do one more week, get a little bit extra lean, a little extra cool looking, a little extra veiny, and then start bulking up, you know. But as soon as the bulk starts, there's no chance it's going to end until we're in the upper triple digits. I'm talking 280. I'm talking 300. Maybe not 300. Maybe not exactly 300. But honestly, I'm a little, uh, I'm being a little irresponsible right now. Because I was hungry. I've still got a shower. I probably should have showered first and then eaten my last meal because it is much easier to go to bed right after eating your last meal than it is to eat your last meal, shower, fucking, you know, play on your phone, do whatever, do whatever. And then two hours passed since you had your last meal and now it's time for you to go to bed. I mean, you're just asking for trouble, you know? I know that there's some popsicles in the freezer. I, I know that there's some fucking treats in there and some little, uh, like, chocolate candies in the cupboard. So it's always in my best interest, at least, from my kind of training diet experience, to try to make the last meal of the day as close to bedtime as possible. I've never noticed any problems with, like, my digestion or, like, it upsetting my sleep. You know, now I'm kind of tracking, I can... It's kind of cool if you get a fucking sort of Fitbit style thing, it'll show you when you're like in REM and when you're in deep sleep or whatever else. Like I haven't noticed any problems. But if that's you, if you can't sleep on a full stomach, then I guess you're kind of screwed. So plan is sit here, enjoy, find my phone, play on it, 
watch a couple videos or something, go to bed and repeat. Hour of cardio in the morning, really going to lock it in this last week, do a little bit of extra cardio for the finishing touches of the diet, and then open the floodgates calorie-wise. Get, get used to this kitchen, we're going to be in here a lot. I'm talking meal prep, I'm talking rice cooker, I'm talking potatoes in the oven, like a whole tray of them. You know, we're getting serious with this bulk. Best bulk so far, title to be determined. But that's all I got for the day. I'll see you tomorrow for, oh, for chest. I'm already excited.